from church now and Flintstones is on, <laughs> so you're probably hearing that in the background. But let me just give you a rundown. The whole reason I'm filming is because I'm gonna slice into this peanut butter bread that I made yesterday, peanut butter yeast bread, and then we're gonna get this toasted up. I am so looking forward to this. I just wanted to give you guys kind of, you know, give you a little review of how that turns out. So we're just gonna have some leftover, this is watermelon from last night. I'm gonna do scrambled eggs and we have some of this pre-cooked bacon. So we're gonna warm that up in the microwave and that is gonna be breakfast here. Oh, it smells good. A, a peanut butter cookie. <laughs> We're gonna film Joe's plate. What do you have on your plate today, Joe? Um, scrambled eggs, toast, bacon. <gasps> Looks good. <laughs> okay, so the verdict on the peanut butter bread is that it's good. Probably not something I would make all the time. Um, the peanut butter is just a uh, just a hint of peanut butter in it, and so when I put when I toasted it and put butter and then jelly on it. It almost tasted like you were having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but not quite, because you're kind of like, well, I think there's peanut butter, but I don't really feel a peanut butter. <laughs> good loaf of bread, very good toasted. We liked it toasted better than just plain with a little butter. Definitely a recipe that I'm going to keep because I do feel like I would make it again. It's the kind of thing that maybe I would make like once a year just to have a little change of pace. But in the end, especially for Warren, he was like, oh, it's not just good old homemade white bread. And I'm like, no, it's not just good old homemade white bread. We'll eat up the whole loaf. I just know we will toast it up in the morning. Joe loved it. He inhaled it. Um, Peter and Maria wouldn't try it. And Sam thought it was okay. Tonight we're going to be having this ranchero supper. We're going to serve this over chips. I already have everything ready to go because you guys saw I did it a couple days ago, which I'm so happy for. Um, I just put it on high. It's actually 10 after 4. I wanted to put it in earlier and then we ended up with some unexpected guests. So the grower representative from the company where we sell our fruit to, or one of the companies, he stopped out with some people from California and they wanted to see like cranberries in the process and stuff like that. I don't know what's going on in the background, but that's Sam and Joe. <laughs> but anyway, so what I'm gonna do now is this was, maybe April told me this, and I feel like I've probably done this before, but I know that this is not gonna get totally hot in about an hour to an hour and a half. I'm gonna take some of it out, put it on the stove, warm it up, throw it in here, and then we're just gonna call it good. And then it'll be hot enough for supper. So I'm popping in here to share two things. One, the Ranchero nachos from last night. We liked them well enough. Warren ate them, I ate it. Joe inhaled it, he loved it, and, and said, thanks mom, and gave me the two thumbs up. You know, Mandy, from Mandy in the Making, her son, Cole, is always either giving one or two thumbs. Joe absolutely loves her videos, and he always will give me a one or a two thumbs up. Peter really thought he was going to love it, and then it's a little sweet with that barbecue sauce in it, and then those baked beans. It's a little bit sweet, and so it's just kind of an unexpected flavor. Too sweet and just too different. But when I asked, should I keep this in the rotation? Warren was like, yeah, I would eat this again. And Peter's like, mm, I'd rather have regular nachos. Peanut butter bread, <laughs> toasted, buttered, a little extra smear of peanut butter and jelly is my new favorite lunch. We had that for lunch today. So that is the peanut butter bread I made the other day. I sliced it really, really thin and then toasted it up. So it was like kind of pretty crunchy and Joe loved it, I liked it, Maria ate it, and she's not a peanut butter and jelly fan. Peter, <laughs> he kind of complained about it. And that was all that was home for lunch today. Well, good morning, it actually is still morning. It's 11.25, it's a Sunday, we're home from church. We had some donuts. We have some, a couple buckets of scraps. Peter and Joe are gonna take those. Oh, why'd you do that? It slid off. It slid, oh, does that stink? So anyways, we have some scraps that they're gonna take out to the chickens, hurry. But I'm here today because I'm in the kitchen and I just thought, you know what? I am going to share probably three days or so of just kind of in the kitchen, what I'm doing, my thought process and things like that. So just a few minutes ago, I 
opened up, let me show you. I opened up our freezer here and I just kind of reorganized it. I had two half bags of cranberries, I combined those. I got all of my onions together. I put my bags of vegetables together. Here are some breakfast things. I have some sausage, just a little bit of um, bacon here. I have a few hash brown patties. Anyway, some calico beans couple half containers of whipped topping and I just brought everything or just kind of put it all together because I had been opening up my freezer and my refrigerator and I was finding that I kept thinking like I have so much food but why do I not know what I want to make or what I should make with the food and the problem is that it's just always frozen <laughs> and I end up with stuff like that and and I would bet that if you garden or like to buy extras of things and kind of freeze uh, you know freeze food for later use that kind of thing I would wager to guess that you probably have that same thing going on in your freezer so Every once in a while, I like to just pull it all out, reorganize it. I had like two half bags of frozen strawberries. I had, oh, I had two half bags of chopped up green pepper. And so I just combined everything and reorganized it. And what happens when I do that, I start to think, oh, I could make, oh, I could make. And then I jot those things down really quick. So I just jotted down that I'd like to make some rustic pies. And I'm hoping that I can get that done over the next few days and show you in this video. One of the things I did find though was actually left from Easter. It was a pack of these uh, Rhodes dinner rolls. They obviously thawed a little bit and then all stuck together. So they don't look pretty, but I just put them on this sprayed pan. I'm going to cover these in the saran wrap and cover these and just let these rise slowly through the day. And we're going to have these with supper tonight because what I'm going to do for supper is make some turkey noodle soup. I'm noticing I have some bananas that really, really, look at that that's getting pretty gross but I know inside they're still fine and so I'm going to probably do something with bananas today and I also have a pot of turkey so I had um, slow cooked I didn't use my instant pot this time but I used my slow cooker and I just slow cooked a whole bunch of wild turkey breast meat that I had and I'm just going to get that all chopped up and make some turkey noodle soup which is actually going to be perfect because I have peas in the freezer and I have carrots and usually in turkey noodle soup, I'll put peas, carrots, and green beans, and then kluski noodles, which is just kind of like an old-fashioned um, egg, egg noodle. And then I just put in like turkey broth, which I have canned turkey broth. So it's gonna be really easy to put the soup together. I have two quarts of my home canned turkey broth in here. I'm putting in one quart of water. I'm gonna stick my finger in and just taste it. The broth has really good, kind of a really good herb flavor from all the herbs that I put in it when I was cooking it down, but it definitely needs some salt. So there's at least probably two teaspoons of salt right there. I have this turned up nice and high. I'm gonna let this come to a boil and chop up some carrots. This is gonna be a very rustic soup. I'm not cutting all the pieces to look exactly the same. It's gonna be just very, very rustic, which I feel like, <laughs> if we're being honest here, is that just another way for saying sloppy? I don't know, but anyway, that's what I'm doing today. As soon as my broth water mixture comes to a boil, I'm gonna add in the carrots and, and I'm gonna add in, this is a 16 ounce bag of Kluski noodles, and these are just a really, really yummy, tasty egg noodle. And they actually call them egg dumpling noodles. And I don't know, if you've never had them, you should try them. They make soup taste so delicious. I also have red onions already diced up. So when I put in the carrots and the noodles, I'm also going to add in some onions as well. I think thyme is a good flavor in turkey noodle soup. So I'm gonna put in just a few shakes of this. I'm also gonna put in some garlic powder. When I say some, I just kind of sprinkle. The thyme, there was probably about an eighth of a teaspoon, and I think the garlic powder is probably gonna be about a half teaspoon. Thank you. 
And you guys know, since I'm in the kitchen, <laughs> I'm going to just, if I can get this open. So that's the rest of the turkey. I decided to shred all of it up because later this week, I would like to make a like turkey and gravy to serve over mashed potatoes. I know that that's something that Warren would really like. I'd really like it too. And I know Joe will like it a lot too. So we'll see with, you know, Peter and Maria. They're always a wild card when it comes to food. I have that all shredded up now. And I have one more jar of turkey stock in the basement on a shelf and so I thought I'd bring that up not today though I'm not going to do it I'll actually make the gravy just the day that we want to eat it and I'll just season that up really really well with salt pepper and then any other flavors that I feel I'd like for a turkey a turkey gravy and I've just kind of been making a little bit of a meal plan here I have some ideas of a couple new recipes I want to try it's just it's tricky because this takes a lot of like it has I don't know, if, can you see that? These are um, fresh, fresh shrimp nachos, and it actually calls for avocado and an avocado sauce that you make, and I just, I feel like I'd have to have amber around if I was going to make something like that, so we'll see if that happens. Uh, the baked nachos I'd like to make happen this week, and then... Also, I'd like to make some, yes, just some sesame chicken breast, so I don't, I'll probably do that on the grill. None of that is set in, so, set in stone, but what I'm doing is just kind of um, brainstorming some ideas because I have a lot of food in freezers. So I've been just kind of walking around, looking in the pantry, looking in the freezers, thinking, what could I do with this? that makes it so I don't have to buy a whole ton of extra ingredients. I thought I'd probably just show you. So out here I have a pack of frozen bratwurst and a thing of bacon. And I think those are hot dogs. Yes, so like this week, I could, with very minimal grocery shopping, because it is getting to be time for my, you know, once a month big grocery shopping trip, I could pick up just a can of chili and we could do chili dogs. With this bacon, I can thaw this. We could do some bacon wrapped mini roasts because I already have lots of venison in the freezer. The brats, I'm pretty sure that I have between those hot dogs and these brats, I still think I have enough buns. I'll have to check in the next freezer. But we could do something like just cook up all these brats one day, have just a really simple, you know, bratwurst supper, put some canned goods with it, and everybody would be just happy, happy. I have two pictures of chicken here, so I am going to earmark some chicken this week. These are chicken drumsticks, and these are also chicken drumsticks. I'm going to pull out one of those, and I'm going to just slip that into our first fridge out here. Look at this, I actually have another pack of hot dogs that aren't even frozen. I don't have my notebook with me here today. That would just be a tip for you guys that I would highly encourage you if you're kind of like, oh, I just don't know what to make for meals anymore. Just start going through your pantry, your fridge, your freezer, and just kind of look at everything and you know, just kind of really think like, what could I do with this? Think about some of the meals that you get at restaurants too and think, oh, well, I know, so-and-so in my family has ordered hot turkey over mashed potatoes or something. Or, oh, I know they really like this certain kind of burger. Maybe you have burgers, like frozen burger patties, and you might have barbecue sauce, and you might have some kind of cheese, and you can make a, like a Western burger or something. So just sort of kind of think about the things that people order at the restaurant and see if you can make some of those types of things at home. It just really helps. Okay, there's only 20 seconds left here. And everything looks, those noodles look perfectly cooked. I'm gonna add in the turkey, the peas, and the green beans. If my soup broth and the meat are very, very lean, I like to put in a little pat of butter. I think it just adds a little extra flavor and it does add a little bit of fat to it, which always makes soup taste just that much better. Whenever I make a meat and noodle soup like this, a lot of it comes down to just tasting until it gets the right flavor. And so I did add in a little bit of tur a little bit of I always say this wrong turmeric 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 okay so I added a little bit of this just a sprinkling across the top until it was just kind of like yellowish and I stirred that in that adds flavor as well as a beautiful color and then it still wasn't quite the flavor but I didn't want to just add plain salt so I have better than bouillon this is the vegetable soup base and so I added just like a little spoonful and I just kept stirring until it was all dissolved and now I tasted it and it's exactly the flavor I'm looking for I know that I have made this banana bread in a number of videos so I'll just link this recipe 
for you guys below in the description box. Um, it's so easy and it's always so good. It stays moist for a really, really long time. I'm not really sure what it is about this recipe that makes it stay so moist, but it just does and it's so delicious. This banana bread also freezes really well and a lot of times what I do is I make it in little tiny loaves and then I wrap it in saran wrap and then put them all into a freezer bag, pop them in the freezer and I can give them away, um, you know, if someone stops over or if I stop someplace or if I, whatever, I can just, I can pull one out. They thaw fast as well. So if somebody stops over, we want to have some, you know, have like a little bite or something, I can always thaw it really fast. So, but not today. Today I just decided to make a big full size loaf and it's basically, it's just going to be for us this time. <laughs> so a whole lot has happened in the kitchen here, uh, just sort of behind the scenes today. Warren and I were out working on getting like, um, steaks and wires up for holding up the tomato plants and Peter actually put in the muffins or no these rolls the dinner rolls and he baked those for me which was super nice he did a great job and then the soup here actually absorbed absorbed all the broth and it looks more like a turkey noodle stew which is fine I put the bread in the banana bread in to bake and then and that was also when Warren and I were out working on the tomatoes. So Peter, uh, he ran the oven for that too, and he got that all done. So the banana bread looks really, really good. That's going to be supper tonight. We're just going to, we've been outside pretty much all the day, um, swimming and whatever, gardening and stuff like that. So anyway, that's what we're going to be doing for supper tonight. So it is Wednesday now, and I have not spent a whole lot of time in the kitchen. We had some leftover pizza from last night when we um, went out for pizza. We bought extra so we could have some leftovers for tonight or for lunch today. And now for supper, I'm finally making the nachos. I was just warming up the meat on the stove here. And then I'm layering up chips. I have some refried beans here, some nacho cheese, and the meat. And this here is from IGA Rico's Gourmet Nacho. This has a little bit of a zip to it. Uh, pretty tasty. First time I ever bought this, but this was what they had at IGA. So... I thought I'd try it and I, I actually would buy this again. I'm really liking it a lot. So I'm going to put another layer of chips and some more meat, some more beans, some more cheese. In other kitchen news, look at this. I totally redid this cabinet just... Did you get new cups? Did you get rid of the plastic ones? Oh good, you I did got get rid of that all one. the plastic cups, I'm so glad all the mismatchy plastic one. cups. Where did the tea plates go? On the tea plates if they're clean they're going to go back there it's going to be a little trick to get to them but anyway yeah these all here let me show these maria so these looney tunes glasses i believe are from hardy's and they say on them pepsi let's see if it'll focus on there uh it's not really yeah peppy le pew so anyway i think that says it says 1973 so i remember when I was a little girl, although I would have been only one, I would have been one. But anyway, um, yeah, these cups, these glasses all came from my mom, and I finally unwrapped them all. They've been in our basement for like 20 years. This was just kind of my little afternoon project. I cleaned it all out, wiped everything down, and now I have two boxes of stuff to get rid of, so I'm happy about that. The cheese is the melty cheese. Put some more. Okay, so I have some cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese? Yes. Is that what you like, cheddar? Yeah. Well, this is nacho cheese. Do you think you're going to like that? Yeah. I'm going to put this in the oven then at 350 degrees. <laughs> Peter's full of extra noise today for 15 minutes. Yeah. This cup. Maybe. Oh, you want more? Okay, put a little more meat on. This is Joe's favorite part of nachos is the meat. Let's get it way over there. Okay, that should be enough. Okay, did I say for 15 minutes? I'm finally getting in the kitchen. It's 1030 and here's what we're going to make happen today. So I pulled out the turkey. This was wild turkey that I had um, cooked up. So I pulled that out. I pulled out another jar of turkey broth that I had made. And that I am eventually going to make into turkey and gravy. So I'm going to thicken this and season it up really, really well because it's probably... It's flavorful and it's bone broth, but it is going to need a lot of seasoning to it, you know, to get it to kind of that gravy flavor, right? So I'm going to get that going a little bit later. 
First, I have my bread machine here, and I'm going to get a loaf of bread going. This is called country cornmeal bread. I've never made it before, but it sounds pretty regular. It just has bread flour, cornmeal, buttermilk, which I'm just going to make with 2% milk and... Um, and lemon juice, it has butter, it has sugar, it has salt, and it has yeast. So really, it has no funny stuff in it um, that's going to throw anyone for a loop or anything like that. So we're going to get this going, and then we'll move on to the turkey and gravy. There we go. It's like I've never used this before or something. All right, so dough setting and start. There we go. I'll check this in just a few minutes, like three, four minutes. Make sure that it's looking, um, you know, I want it to just have the right consistency. If it looks a little dry, I'll add another couple teaspoons of water. The bread machine is really going right now, so you're going to have to excuse that sound. But I'm making some gravy now, and since I'm starting with turkey broth, which is not fatty at, at all, I had skimmed all the fat off when I canned, I guess we call it top turkey stock. Uh, anyway, I'm kind of starting with like the idea of making a, a roux, and so I have one and a half sticks of butter. Let's see if I can get that to melt down. As soon as it melts here, what I'm going to do is add in three-fourths of a cup flour, two teaspoons of salt, a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And then I'm just going to stir that up and let, like, you know, the flour absorb all that butter. And then we're going to add in the chicken, or sorry, the turkey broth. So I'll be adding in three cups, nope, I think four cups. I'm going to add the whole quart of turkey broth. as well as two cups of milk. When you're making a roux, it does work best to either use some sort of a whisk or to use a fork. Those seem to work the best because you really want that flour to get fully mixed in so it's nice and smooth so you don't get a lumpy gravy. And then as soon as this is a little bit more bubbly than this, I'm going to start stirring in the broth. And the reason that you want it to bubble, even though it's already thickened up, is that you want that flour flavor, you want the flour to actually cook so it doesn't just taste like glue. If you don't cook your flour long enough, you kind of risk it tasting a little gluey instead of more gravy-like. That looks really good. I'm just going to pour in about half and then stir, pour in the other half, stir, and then I'll add the milk last. And depending on how creamy-like you want your gravy, you can use heavy whipping cream, you can use whole milk. I just, I'm going to use 2% because that's what I have today. Woo, I splashed over the edge, whoops. <laughs> Now I'm going to bring this to a boil for one minute. That'll thicken it up nicely and then I'll, I'll taste it, add any other seasonings that I think it needs. I might add a little poultry seasoning, maybe a little bit of thyme. I could add a little celery salt or celery seed, I guess, depending on what it what I feel like it needs. Really, whatever flavors you like in your gravy. It's boiling now. I put in a little bit of ground thyme. I put in a little bit of turmeric, and I'm just going to give that a stir. I don't think that the turmeric, turmeric, turmeric <laughs> gives it... I don't know why that word is so hard for me to say. But anyway, I don't know why... Or I don't think it gives it a ton of flavor, but I do like that it gives it just kind of a nice yellow. It just gives it such a pretty color, I think. So anyway, just going to let this boil up for one minute. I almost said an hour. Don't ever do that. For just one minute, I'm going to taste it. And I think I'm going to be adding a little bit more pepper as well. The turkey stock that I had from 2019 that I actually used in the soup that I made, the turkey noodle soup. I didn't have that quite as seasoned as the turkey stock that I made in 2020. So after tasting this here, I just added a little bit more pepper and can I just say that homemade bread toasted and then dumped this gravy over, I wouldn't even need the turkey. <laughs> this is literally, I let a little bit cool here. It's literally 
absolutely delicious. So definitely try it this way. It's more of a creamed gravy rather than, oh, I don't know, rather than a regular gravy that kind of starts like, it, it's just different than a pan gravy. You know, when you have the, um, like the drippings and you have uh, little bits of meat or skin or whatever kind of cooked on, it's just a different kind of gravy. This is different, it's a creamed gravy, it's so good. The easiest thing for me to do right now is to put this in my crock pot with the turkey and just put it on, since this is so hot, I'm just gonna put it on warm all day and keep it nice and warm. And this is what we're gonna have for supper tonight. It is 11.14, uh, I do have the kids outside. No, I don't think they're out there yet, are they? No, they're not. But anyways, I told them that I had a dozen ear of corn that I picked up. So yesterday we had gone on another bike ride and we stopped at a little store. It's called Farmer's Pantry. It's kind of like a Mennonite scratch and dent discount kind of a store. Anyway, they have like scratch and dent stuff. They have stuff that's close to its expiration date. You got to watch carefully because some of it's actually past it. Um, and then they have like a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, farmer's market kind of stuff like that. And they had corn a dozen for $5.50 and our corn is not anywhere near ready. If we go into the city where we live, then the roadside stands, the corn is $7.50 a dozen. And so this was only $5.50 a dozen. So I thought that was a great price. So we picked up corn. So we're going to have that for lunch and then warm up the leftover nachos from the other night, as well as I have a little bit of hug and kiss soup. And so we'll warm that up as well. So we'll just have all of that for lunch today. It's going to be yummy and I cannot wait for some fresh corn. <laughs> all right. And here's how it looks all mixed up. I know sometimes meat in creamed gravy <laughs> doesn't always look super appetizing but trust me this is actually super yummy i just took out a piece of mm -hmm, i took out a piece of turkey a little bit ago and it was yummy yummy so i added more turkey to it all right next up today i am getting a beef roast going this is a beef chuck roast it was just about three pounds and i'm going to make what I'm doing is just cooking this down so that I can shred it up. So I kind of chunked it into some smaller pieces and then this was a long bone so I couldn't cut that any smaller. Oh, we got kids screaming in the background. <laughs> but anyway, this is about a half an onion that I had in the fridge. And then I put in here, let's see, let me think back what I actually did here. Two teaspoons of minced garlic. I put that half of an onion in here. I put in a teaspoon of salt, about a half teaspoon of black pepper, a couple tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, one and a half cups of water, and then two teaspoons of this beef soup base. That's it. And I'm just going to put the cover on, cook this on low until the meat is extremely tender, and then I will shred it up. So then once I have it shredded up, I'm going to put it back into the juices that are in here, and I will add in probably more onion because these are gonna get cooked down, you know, really, really soft. So I'm gonna add some more onion in, as well as some green pepper slices, and then continue to kind of cook that on low. And then we'll make this into Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. So we'll just use the meat. But I have always, always only used provolone. And if you look up Philly cheesesteaks online, you're gonna see that there's quite the debate over if it should be provolone cheese or cheese whiz. There's even people that say you shouldn't have anything on it other than the meat and the veggies. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do with this. What do I have over there? I have turkey and gravy, and then I will have Philly cheesesteak, and we will be set. We'll be able to eat for probably three days on that stuff. That should work out, depending on who all is home, really. <laughs> I like to leave my bread in the baking pan for just a few minutes before I give it a couple shakes to loosen it up and then I dump it out and I will cool this on its side. It's got a nice crunchy crust, that's good. Warren's gonna like that. I actually prefer to put butter on the top so it gives a soft crust, but um, maybe I'll do that on half. Half and half, that might be good. Looks like this is Joe's kind of meal, huh? Lots of meat, lots of mashed potatoes. <laughs> Thanks. And then we're just having some sliced up cucumbers from the garden with tonight's supper. Yep, you need something more than that. This looks really good. 